What is up everybody? This is Michael Filesage checking in here today. I hope you guys are doing well. In today's video, I wanna talk about three things. First thing I wanna talk about is side pins. Now I've made a video before that, but here I have an opportunity to illustrate to you exactly what I was talking about in the discussion on side pins and liners video that I posted a few weeks back. Now on the second part of this video, I wanna tell you guys about how you can harvest side pins in shoe boxes in particular. Uh, I wanna give you some tips and things like that. And in the last part of the video, part three, I wanna tell you guys about how I like to go about um, rehydrating your substrate after a flush so that you could prepare for the next flush, right? Um, and I'm gonna talk about a couple of different techniques and what's really important at the end of the day. All right, so let's get to this video. Now, the first thing that, as I said, I wanted to show you guys is this substrate. Now, this guy had one flush, right? And this guy had a most excellent flush. Avery's Albino, it's flushed uh, over 30 grams dry, which is an excellent yield from one quart of spawn, which is very, very good. That's what you wanna aim for. You know, if you could get an ounce dry, that is you're doing something right in a flush. So as you can see on the side, um, because it was such a big flush, the substrate has shrank quite a bit, right? quite a bit and but the thing is I think you'll notice that there are barely any side pins at all side fruits slash side pins like like nothing on this side I think there's a bottom pin somewhere yeah there's a bottom pin there um and there's a pin there's a fruit right over there but other than that there is nothing this thing guys was just a forest canopy right a rainforest canopy and um and barely any side pins so what helped here? Okay, so the first thing that helped was I used liquid culture for this. Um, I've already worked on genetics. That's the first thing. So good genetics is definitely gonna help in the sense that you get your flush all at once. Because with uh, multi-sport genetics, you're gonna have a, a lot more different strains fruiting and they're all gonna be on different time schedules. Let's say you harvest a bunch, but then you're gonna have a bunch of little pins coming on, right? So oftentimes with multi-sport, it's kind of hard to like set, okay, this is the end of the flush. Right, there's no like clear demarcation point. Oftentimes, you're just sort of harvesting as you go, and you know, like misting and stuff. Uh, sorry, um, like dunking and stuff sort of goes out the wayside. Um, I talk about this in uh, one of my videos. I think about harvesting. Yeah, I think it was harvesting talk. I talk about how some genetics will put out, you know, fruits all at once, and it's really easy to harvest. And other times, they're gonna put out a little bit here and there. And those are the annoying ones. Uh, so. Oftentimes when I get genetics like that nowadays, all I do is I would just harvest them all at once, just pins and all. Now, you know, when you're a beginner, you're like, oh, but you know, you, if you let those other fruits over here mature a little bit, then you're gonna have greater yield in the end, right? Well, believe me guys, um, if you're at the point where you can get fruits from, a from basically you can successfully fruit mushrooms, then before you know it, you're gonna be just completely swamped with fruits. You, you, it's gonna be a problem, guys, I'm serious. Mark my words. You're going to get to a point where you have so many fruits, you just don't even care about yield much anymore. Like I am, right? Like I'm, I don't know what to do with all the fruits, but I just keep them. Um, and the collection keeps adding up. So, you know, just harvesting pins and everything. And now I just think, okay, well, you know, pins are also tastier than bigger fruits as well. So, you know, it's, it's nothing really goes to waste. But anyways, getting back to the side pins and stuff. So, you know, as you've noticed, there's, there's no liner here, but as you can see, there's barely any pins, right? Why is that? It's because the surface conditions are really, really optimal for the fruits to be coming. Now, it looks like a war zone right now because the harvesting itself was not a very clean thing, but, uh, you know, I, I only go for like a flush or two, so it doesn't even matter to me. But basically what I did here was oftentimes I have problems with shoe boxes of the top drying out if I make like an unmodified shoe box like this, right? It would just like, because I live in a place with low relative humidity and and often the top dries out. So I don't get fruits on, you know, on certain parts and I might get some side pins. Um, now there's, there's ways to ameliorate that. You know, you could put that, put for example, the shoe box inside a bigger uh, like mono tub, right? And then it keeps the moisture in there or you could put it in a tent or something like that. But the whole point, the whole reason I use shoe boxes is for the side fact, the size factor is so that I don't have to do all of that. So I don't have to have a bunch of big things around in my house, right? Uh, I like this form factor of shoe boxes and that's why I stick with them. But again, the problem was the drying out in my environment. So what did I do to help that? Well, I put a proper casing layer on, um, in this case, Jiffy Mix, right? Um, now Jiffy Mix is slightly nutritious, at least nutritious enough for molds to grow. 
So I pasteurize it for an hour and a half. Now, if you want to know how I pasteurize my substrates and my casing layers, check out my um, check out my Instant Pot video, right? All about the Instant Pot or something like that. I have one Instant Pot video, so it's that video. Um, and I go over how I pasteurize stuff there. An hour and a half for casing layers. Um, so yeah, basically the casing layer it protects the mycelium from drying out. I keep the casing layer very moist and it protects the mycelium from drying out. And thus we got an amazing flush. And we got barely any side pens because the side fruits basically did not want to fruit on the side when it was so much happier fruiting to, from the top. I love seeing happy mushrooms like that, guys. So yeah, that's basically the first part of this video, I suppose. So let's talk about the second part which is how should you go about harvesting? Now, again, this is a very, very easy harvest, right? Because oftentimes, you know, you might have a bunch of mature side pins and then you might have a bunch of pins on top. So it's like, okay, how are we gonna harvest this, right? Like I can't get to the side fruits unless I like destroy all the pins here so I could hold it or something of that sort. It does get challenging. And I'll be honest, if you're if that's your situation, then you might just want to harvest everything at once. I know it sucks. I know it sucks. Uh, I usually don't do that, or at least I find it hard to do that. But uh, well, we'll talk about it when we get there. So I'm going to set this camera up and I'll show you guys how I like to do it. All right, guys, so I'm back. So I'm going to show you guys how I like to harvest the side fruits. Now with the shoebox, it's very, very easy. Here we got fruit here. We got a fruit there. So, you know, it's not we. we don't have much at all. We only have two measly little side and bottom fruits. Um, but the technique that I'm going to show you is the same for if you have a high amount or a low amount. Now the easiest, okay, so remember I was just talking about what do you do if you have a lot of pins and stuff and you don't want to, because you know, here's, here's the easiest way. Go like this, take another shoe box, flip it around, go like this, boom, easy, easy to harvest, right? Nice little nifty trick that I like to talk about on this channel. But if you have a lot of fruits on top, then it's kind of hard to do that, right? So I'll show you guys how I do it. It's a little balancing act if you are in that situation. To put it back, it's simple. You just got to go like this. Oh, it's a little bit heavy. Okay, there we go. Go like that. Voila, right? Simple as, simple as can be. So what I do is instead of using the shoe box, right? Pretend I got a bunch of pins. I'm going to carefully position my fingers. Right? I'm going to carefully position my fingers so that I damage as little as possible. In other words, I want you guys to imagine that there are a bunch of pins on the surface of the substrate that I'm carefully avoiding touching with my fingers so that I don't damage them and potentially abort them. I mean, you are probably going to end up damaging some pins, some hyphal knots, some primordia. It's, 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 a, it's the cost of uh, growing mushrooms. Don't worry, there's going to be more coming out later. So just try to be as careful as possible. Flip it around like this. Unfortunately, I was not able to keep the substrate in view of the camera for the harvesting part. But essentially, what you want to do at this point is to pick the side and bottom pins. Be sure to stay aware of how the substrate is balancing on your hand, as it is possible that the substrate may crack in half if improperly balanced. So I'm going to put it back inside, and there you go. Now, if you do end up cracking the substrate, it's not the end of the world. You could put it back together, just try to be careful next time. Or, um... You know, the best way to prevent, the best way to not get side pins is prevention, right? So if you are getting side pins often, then try to fix that. Because once you fix that, then you won't even have to worry about it. You know, people say, you got if you don't use a liner, you're gonna get a bunch of side fruits. It's BS. You know, liners, you know, they, they are really good. The only reason I use liners, right, is to basically help harvest monotubs. Because you can't do these little nifty, fun, little, cute little tricks with a monotub. Because it's just a bit, it's just too big. Right? You can't balance it on one hand. Um, I suppose you can actually flip two monos depending on the kind of box it is. But uh, yeah, I'm not a fan, for example, of floating. That's a method that people like to use. I'm not a fan of that. It's meth messy and it's completely unnecessary. Just make a nice liner and just pull it out. Uh, in my opinion, that's that that will be that's ideal for me. So yeah, that's basically how you harvest a shoebox. Um, now if I Another method that I used to do it is, again, I just talked about floating. The reason that I didn't bring up this method first is because I'm not a fan of it personally, but uh, what I used to do is I used to float the tubs, right? And once I'd float it, then I'd carefully like sort of push it down, get the pins that I can. So it was just like a way of sort of uh, not touching the pins or not harming the pins on the top and just sort of pushing it down and then just like with the other hand harvesting what I can. 
it wasn't very fun, especially when you have to do like bottom fruits. It's not very good for, for bottom fruits. So I don't really recommend that, right? Um, so, you know, as you do it, as you get experience, um, hopefully, well, A, you don't get side pins. So you deal with that, right? Remember, the main thing is to have good surface conditions. And it also helps to pack down your substrate a bit. And the other thing is to basically sort of just find out what works for you. Just try a couple and see what works for you. I just presented some of my options and shared my experiences. So take with it what you will. So to sum things up, my personal recommendation is as follows. If you have a lot of side and bottom fruits that are mature, but pins still on top, then I would balance the substrate with my fingers whilst picking the side and bottom fruits. Or I may simply harvest everything and call it a day. Now on the other hand, if I had already harvested the top fruits, but still have side and bottom fruits, then I would simply flip the substrate onto the bottom of another shoe box and then harvest them as I had shown earlier in this video. So now we're going to talk about the last part of this video, and that is rehydrating your shoe box. So let's talk about rehydration. This is an interesting topic. You know, the first thing, the go-to of everybody, uh, or at least a lot of people, the first go-to is to dunk, right? Um, is to basically dunk your substrate, whether it's shoe box, whether it's uh, PF cakes, whether it's monotubs, you know, it doesn't matter. Uh, whether it's bad grows, it's just like dunk it, right? So basically what that means is just covering the whole thing in water or just covering like the whole sides and letting it float and then maybe weighing it down with something. I've never been a fan of dunking, guys. I've never been a fan of filling my tub. It's just messy. It's just unnecessary. Um, and I think it's like dunking has is one of those practices that I feel is going the way of the dodo. You know, same as, you know, fanning, your, your uh, monotubs and stuff, guys, fanning is completely outdated. Uh, just in case you guys don't know, you should not be fanning. It's it's completely unnecessary um, with shoe boxes and monotubs, especially when they're like, they're like shoe boxes are basically already dialed in out of the box. You don't really have to worry about it. I mean, obviously, you know, everybody's environment's a little different, but in terms of the FAE department, which fanning is supposed to help with a shoe box, you don't have to worry about it. They get tons of FAE. Not enough moisture, okay, that's something that could work out, that, that could need some work. For example, in my case, I had to use a casing layer, right? But in terms of FAE, you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry about fanning, guys. For example, if you're doing an unmodified uh, monotub, right? And your fruits are getting, you know, are having uh, fuzz on the bottom and up the top, right? Your fruits are sort of getting skinny. Okay, you got an FAE problem. You gotta fix that, right? Um, but when, when that monotub is done right, it doesn't have anything to do with you. You don't have to fan it. You should be able to neglect it, right? Um, so you should be striving towards that point. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, dunking is going the same way. Um, it's just really unnecessary because at the end of the day, all they need is water. That's it, right? They just need water one way or the other. Now in nature, they get it from rain. And that's sort of the method that I'm doing it recently is to just heavy mist, just mist the crap out of it, right? Um, and before, just, you know, maybe up until semi-recently, I used to bottom water, but I avoid bottom watering because um, because of side pins, basically. Like, it it encourages a better uh, fruiting environment on the side because now that the substrate has shrank, right, uh, it's creating, like, perfect conditions for fruits to come, right? It's just too easy for fruits to come in there rather than come on the top, so... I'm sort of avoiding that now. Another method that you could use is you could take a clean syringe, fill it up with uh, water, and just sort of inject, inject your substrate all over, right? And how much you shoot in there, it depends, you know, experiment a little, just start off slowly. Um, but personally, what I like to do now is just basically mist, because, because if the substrate it wants water, right, it's going to literally absorb that water quicker than a substrate that doesn't want water. Like, if you pay attention to what the mycelium's telling you, what the substrate's telling you, uh, it's very easy. You will be able to tell. If, if it stops absorbing that water as much, then lay off on the misting. So basically, after you get a flush, just mist heavy for a couple of days, like this. Now, in this one, I have a proper casing layer, so you see that I'm misting fairly close, right? But if I didn't have a casing layer, then obviously I'd, I'd mist a little further just to be careful. But these guys can take it, baby. So we're just going to give it a nice good misting. And yeah, as I said, one of the benefits of this is that it encourages 
uh, better fruiting conditions on the top rather than the side. Now, once you get to this point where your substrate has shrank, then it's normal to get more side pins, right? That's basically with core lovers, especially that's just how it goes, right? I think we need to change the way we look at side pins because we think of it like, oh, it's the end of the world. Oh, it's like something that's completely avoidable. It's not completely avoid avoidable in my experience after a certain point. You are going to get some side pins at one point or another. They're completely edible as long as they're not rotting. As long as you don't leave them for too long or they don't smell funky or they're not too slimy, they'll be fine, guys. So just moderate misting, moderate heavy misting, and they will absolutely love it, guys. Just pretend this is heavy rain. Not the game, but like, you know, actual heavy rain. As they face in nature, right? That tells them, oh, it's uh, fruit soon we're gonna be fruiting, you know? And then you could also stimulate thunder. Okay, I'm going a little too far there, so. Ooh. So that's basically, um, I guess the video for the day. I'm sure as usual, I missed something. And later on, I'm gonna be like, oh, I should have talked about this or whatever. But um, I guess that's, that's sort of the video for now, so. Now on top, I've got some pooling water inside some of the craters here. So if within the next hour or two, if they're not mostly absorbed, then I'm just gonna, you know, drain it out or something. So here's an update 24 hours later. They absorbed everything within three hours. So I gave them another misting before going to bed. When I woke up, they had also absorbed that as well. So I gave it another misting. Now, once they stop absorbing as much, I will know that the substrate is sufficiently hydrated and thus I will lay off on the misting. So that's the video for today, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope you guys have a great day or night. Michael File Sage, checking out for now.